Hey you, yes, you, do you want to play Cyberpunk 2077 with an extra frame per second? Despite your OCD by having the camera always be slightly off to the left. And somehow it was angled too close to the butt. Do you want to engage in tactical turn-based combat like in chess, but epic? He's pulling his cock out! There's all that and more in Persona. But I've already talked about that, so how about the black sheep of the family? Shin Megami Tensei. No, wait, that? I, I talked about that one last week. Oh, oh god, am I running out of games to talk about already? Uh, uh, um. So, pa so Pac-Man was cool. Soul Hackers is just like the middle child in every family. Unwanted and unloved. Few people played the game and fewer people talk about it. This is due in part to a lackluster promotion from Atlas, but is there more to it? Could this game actually be a hidden gem? Or is it just trash that should be forgotten? Let's start with the gameplay. It's really good. Now onto the story. The game opens with a panty shot of our girl Ringo. Don't get too excited though, because she is currently zero years old. Although she looks like a human, this is actually a robot, and right now a supercomputer called Ion is downloading Ringo's consciousness into it. She, along with her twin Fig, are basically offshoots of an all-knowing supercomputer, except they were designed to fit in with humans. You can tell it works because her eye is already clipping into her hair. A minor plot point is the idea that Ringo is kind of human, but we never get the full extent of how much so. Sure, she doesn't need to eat or sleep, but she clearly can. Worse, even though you wouldn't think a robot could feel pain, for some reason Ion thought it would be funny if she could actually feel the bullet enter her leg. That left me thinking just how far this goes. But where the game leaves questions, a good reviewer gives answers. I'm taking this one to the extreme. Editor, draw Ringo giving birth. I get that like half my edits are just funny nonsense, but what am I even supposed to do here? I can't just like put a funny vine boom and call it a day. Typically the computer just kind of sits at the bottom of the ocean, calculating the end of the world and playing Tetris, but the predictive function of Ion calculated that if two humans, Arrow and this guy, were to die, the world would end. For that reason, Fig and Ringo were given consciousness and human bodies to infiltrate the city and the save- situation on your end, Fig? Target Alpha, Dr. Ichiro Onda, has already been killed. Damn, El Fig. Imagine not being able to walk fast enough to save a- well, fuck me, I guess. Luckily for us, the game doesn't end immediately. Ringo mentioned she can use an experimental ability called a soul hack to revive Arrow since he only died recently. Fig doesn't want Ringo to do it because they don't know the consequences of such a thing. But Ringo says L plus ratio plus title drop and does it anyway. I will die on the hill that she did not have to be so extra to do this. I have to point out, Ringo is nothing like any other protagonist I've ever played as. She is an absolute hater, a Sigma female even, and I love her for it. After Goth Mommy pulls Arrow's soul back from heaven, she explains what just happened, and Arrow accepts it, because obviously he would. Then just to mess with him, Ringo says she lied and that he's still dead. Arrow freaks out because obviously he would, and then Ringo has the audacity to tell him he needs to interact with people more. She's one day old. We talk and this tutorial pops up. It's my favorite thing ever because it just says this number is important and it will go up sometimes, but we won't tell you what it means or why. Ringo says she hasn't fought before and Arrow tells her to stand back. She immediately takes a step forward and that is why I love her. I have to say, we have I haven't even made it to the first boss yet, and the writing has been immaculate. I mean... Yo, they call me Rod Soldier, R to the yes, it ain't hyperbole, cause I can kill on the beat, representing the Phantom Society! <sighs> you know, at, at least they had the restraint to not make him black. I'm no Reaper, but I can send you to hell, so face the music, RS, and take the L. Alright, it's about time I got to the central point of this video. The writing in this game is somehow both perfect and horrendous at the same time. It's like Jekyll and Hyde, but instead of one side being good and the other evil, we get Ringo, a girl boss, and Melody, a girl failure. Melody was killed by a group called the Phantoms. They run gangs, murder people, and get their entire political ideology from watching feminist own compilations circa 2016. Turns to shit. They're the antagonists throughout the game because they want to summon an elderich god to destroy the world. 
world. It's basically like Lysander from Pokemon X and Y, but at least he planned to survive the apocalypse. And all things considered, nuking France wouldn't be the worst foreign policy decision. But the Phantoms also killed Arrow, so why am I only mentioning them now? Billity was their boss! She didn't betray them or anything cool like that. In fact, when we revive her, she tries to kill us so that she can run back to them, only stopping once we tell her they'll just kill her. Again, it would be one thing if her character arc revolved around getting over her Reddit Doomer phase, but even when she reluctantly joins us, she spends the entire game playing defense for the Phantoms and being mean to everyone else for no reason. To justify this, Melody has a tragic backstory. When she was a child, demons possessed everyone in her village, and they were all killed by the anti-apocalypse group Yagatarasu. This is anti-utilitarian racism. Sure, I don't expect to walk up to a screaming child whose entire village just died and say, Erm, did you know that this statistically prevents the most harm? But over a decade later, and she's an assassin actively working to kill everyone to the point where she's willing to slaughter orphans if it means getting revenge? This is not a good person. At one point, the game tries to distance her from the ideology of murder by harping on the fact that the leader of the Phantom saved her life and she only really cares about him. Okay. Alright, so she murders people because she wants to get into Hitler's pants, not because she cares about the genocide. <laughs> that makes it much better. I can just summarize Atlas's defense of Milady with them saying, Cooking once doesn't make you a chef, cleaning once doesn't make you a maid. But when Milady tries to start one apocalypse, suddenly she's evil. Also, we made her hot and look, look, look at this, look at that, look at that condescending look. She'll step on you, she'll step on you. Guys, guys, don't be mean to her, she'll step on you, she'll step on- Here's my advice. If you're sad, that's terrible. If you're traumatized, Get help. Talk to people. Do almost everything you need to do to try and cheer yourself up. But the moment you decide to gamble the lives of everyone else in the world to maybe marginally improve your own life, you need to kill- There's one point that really pisses me off. The third main character, Saizo, says that the Phantoms were crazy for basing their entire plan to wipe out the world on a handful of ancient paintings and documents. And Milady says, ah, You wouldn't understand. You're happy in this world. This philosophy is on par with that of the great Shadow the Hedgehog. Worse, it isn't even accurate. Saizo was just dumped, then killed by his girlfriend. His power was literally eaten from his corpse, leaving him crippled even after he got revived. He only fights because he's been a bounty hunter for so long that he can't trust anyone to let him retire. And then he gets dumped again! <laughs> he's literally just John Wick, but instead of being super cool and invincible, he has mental issues and $5 in his checking account. That being said, Saizo, Ringo, and Arrow have a great dynamic. With Saizo being someone who just fights to survive, Arrow fighting to not cause the apocalypse, and Ringo just being confused, it's always something interesting going on between the three. Their conversations and interactions are great, as it almost always revolves around Ringo trying to better understand them and learning what it means to be a human in the process. Plus, she often helps cheer them up or give them hope for a better future, which is just straight up heartwarming to see. The game isn't coy when it comes to deep emotion either. Saizo comes off as a bit of a sleazy womanizer when we first meet him, but Ringo immediately calls him out for acting like a calmer version of Glenn Quagmire, and he all but straight up admits that it's an act he's been putting on for so long he forgot who he was underneath it. The one negative to Saizo's character seems to be a flaw shared by almost every other NPC in this world. He's politically neutral. I mean, Jesus Christ, I get being a centrist when the options are bad and worse, but when the options are death and not death, you should not be letting the phantoms just walk around in public. For some ungodly reason, almost every NPC, some of the main characters, and even the subtext that Atlas themselves put in the game seems to indicate that Yagatarasu and the Phantoms are, oh, you know, just two sides of the same coin or something. Rather than make this point by making the Phantoms redeemable in any way, they try to bring down Yagatarasu through implication. There's this orphanage that's being run by an ex-member of Yagatarasu, and it's eventually revealed that all the kids have the potential to become Devil Summoners. The natural fear, then, is that they're basically being groomed into joining Yagatarasu once they're old enough. The trouble with that assumption is it's explicitly stated by multiple people that that the orphans don't even know about demons or the existence of Yagatarasu until after they turn 18. And even then, they're given the option to just leave the orphanage like they would normally, or get a free job at Yagatarasu and chill with them. I mean, I get that that could be a bit morally questionable, but if I turned 18 and my mom said, hey, you're magic, here's a gun for free, I feel like that would be pretty cool, actually. <laughs> it doesn't help that almost every interaction with random NPCs is like, wow, 
I can't believe I got this new weapon. Now I could finish fighting demons on behalf of Bird Gang so that the people could be safe. And he turned to the guy next to him and he says, I'm gonna kill so many babies, Shadow Wizard Money Gang, let's go. I mean, seriously, why would the shop sell guns and demons to the phantoms knowing that they want to kill everyone, including you? It's so dumb. It would be like the US giving weapons to ISIS and oh, wait, that that was a thing. Either way, it turns out the leader of the phantoms was an ex-member of Yagatarasu. After slaughtering the villagers from Milady's backstory, he felt so bad for killing all those innocent women and children that he decided to kill everyone. I'm fully serious. His logic is that since the phantoms were gonna win anyway, he would just kill the leader and take them over from the inside so that he could cause the apocalypse first and do it slightly less bad. The fact that this character exists in the same game as my There's glorious beautiful Ringo should be a crime. We kill the leader because he's dumb and shouldn't exist. And then Fig betrays us. She's not evil, but after witnessing the hatred of humanity, she decided to use the power of the old gods to soul hack everybody, removing their capacity for violence. At first I chalk this up to a classic Fig L, but after thinking about it, I think she was almost right, but also completely wrong. Maybe it's the 5G waves from Ion interfering with the brains of everybody, but the fact that everyone in the world just accepts a murderous apocalypse cult as a legitimate political movement makes me think the problem is there should be more violence. Controversial take of the day, I think we should punch more death cultists. Fig dies, unless you do a bunch of side quest stuff, and then she's fine. It doesn't make a big difference though, because the game ends with Milady going back to the Phantoms, Arrow staying with Yagatarasu, and Sazo being a bounty hunter again. Nothing changes. Pro gamer tip, don't do this. Ever. Especially with the Shin Megami Tensei series where players are used to their endings either killing God, becoming God, or inventing slavery. I don't want to give the impression that I hate the game though. Sure, the story was painful at times, and the way they treated the phantoms gave me psychic damage, but I actually enjoyed it the entire time. Only, really, because the interactions between Ringo and everyone else were just so beautiful and dynamic and expressive, and it was just such a nice shakeup having a protagonist with actual personality and bite behind them this time. It's not even that I necessarily agree with her 100%. There were straight up some scenes where she was talking with Arrow and he was like, I fight to save the world. And she was like, I, I fight because my mommy told me I had to be here. And that, that's pretty dope if you ask me. Anyway, this video's gone on for long enough. But you know what video hasn't gone on for long enough? That one. The, the one in the corner right now. I'm pointing at it. Can can you see it? I'm, I'm editing right. I'm pointing to, it, it's the corner of my room, but it's the corner of the video. You gotta click on that one. You should click on it, right? Click on that. It's right there in the click on it. 